guys, so I got a new riding vest here, and I need to put some of my patches on it. I really like this, number one, it's studded, super metal, but when I'm riding, I can put it all the way up. I guess I'm going to set this video up as more of a how-to tips and tricks instead of just me riding and wrenching on bikes, because um, apparel is also super important. So I really like the denim vests. Um, I like the type, it's really hard to find girls ones that actually go all the way up because most of them you have this completely open and exposed and we all normally wear low cut shirts too. So you're just taking bugs and rocks and rain and everything right there in the chest. I used to have vests like this, as you can see, totally open in the boobs. Um, like that, it's not as hot as leather. And it's breathable. So in the summertime, it's perfect. I do not recommend suede. This is what happens to your suede vest when it gets wet and it'll never fit you again. So give it to a fun toddler. Anyway, I'm gonna put some patches on. I have two machines here. I have a Singer. This is a heavy duty style, but you can use just a regular home style Singer, sewing machine, basic stuff. I also have this industrial thing. This thing will sew through like seven pieces of leather like it's nothing. It's hand crank. Um, I'll put a link in the description where I got this. This is awesome. I like this machine for the purpose of um, sewing inside of pockets so you don't lose your pocket because it has this long arm so you can really reach in and put like sleeves in there and all types of good stuff. So you can put patches on places that your other sewing machine will fit. Just about any of your jackets, vests, denim, leather, they can be sewn on with a regular home style sewing machine um, as long as you just have the right stuff. So the most important stuff is your needle and your thread. Singer needles, 9014, 116. They got these little packs that have denim, heavy duty, and leather. I've done just fine sewing through thick leather with the heavy duty style needles. Just make sure they're not ballpoint. Ballpoint needles will not work well on leather and it'll just rip it all up. For thread, um, in my heavy duty machine, I have a thicker braided nylon thread and um, it kind of looks a little bit more professional. It's a lot thicker. Um, that's what the professional patch sewers normally use when you go to rallies and things like that. Unless you're at a rally and I'm the one sewing your patches, then I'm using the sleek, thin, 100% nylon, transparent, it's black transparent, super simple, Walmart special. I've never had an issue with it. I've never had any patches fall off on, I've never had any complaints from anybody either, so. You can use the super thick braided nylon, but I think this stuff works great. It's sleeker and it's thinner. So these are the two machines that I have. I have this honkin' gnarly hand crank machine for the really thick leather if I need to get inside pockets. Or just a regular Singer heavy duty machine. Um, I have, right now I have in there a heavy duty style needle. I got my nylon thread. As far as the settings go, you wanna make sure your width is set to zero because you will just be doing straight line. There's no reason to go zigzag and all these crazy things just for to put on patches. It's, you don't wanna rip up your patch. And then for length, I normally go two and a half. So this is a perfect example of why you wanna keep your thread length more apart. You can see how close these stitches are together and it is just destroying this patch going completely awry. So I have to put some adhesive on there and try something, probably just cross it in the middle to get this to not be completely frayed and destroyed. So you want at least a two or a three when you're putting the patches on as far as length. I always like to start off by like adding some type of weird flare or something to break up all of the black. I was raised in a metalhead and biker home. So this is more of a cross between battle vest meets biker vest. 
So I normally add something like this to my vest, just some flair, something different. So this is going to be more of a how-to video. I have a patch sewing business on the side and I've been seeing some crazy stuff. Some really sad, crazy stuff out there. And people are destroying their vests left and right and their jackets. And you don't need a lot of fancy machines to put vests on. With the amount of money I have invested in my two machines, it easily has paid for all of the patches that I've had put on. Number one, do not use super glue. Do not use hot glue. It looks like hell. It's all wavy and stuff. It's easy enough. You can just sew it on. Don't waste your time with hot glue. Don't super glue it. But if you're going to be riding a motorcycle or getting in a mosh pit with a, your vest, you need it sewed on or they're just not going to stay. So I found this pillowcase and I really love this material and it looked really, really cool on my other vest, my old vest that I had. So we're going to put that on this one. So I know some of you are used to it, but at no time in this video will I be referring to this piece of fabric as a cut. I bought this with the sleeves already cut off. It's not even cut, it's sewn like that. This is not a cut. I did not cut anything. This is a vest. This is a biker vest. I am constantly doing patches for independents and normal people that are saying, oh yeah, man, I, I need some patches for my cut. And it, it's like this year's hog patch. So dude, come on, chill out. Quit watching Sons of Anarchy. It's a vest, you want patches on, that's awesome. Don't make it more than it is. <laughs> it's just too much. <laughs> Once you move your black asshole out of the way, then you can get started on, on anything. I'll make sure to get more of your fur on my damn vest. Come on, you little cocksucker. Come on, put them up. Top half. Good enough. Um, word of advice when you're doing anything with patches in your vest, regardless of what material it is, don't care so much. The more you care, the worse it's going to look. The less you care, the good enough it's going to look. Please. In your fanny. No, come on, fuck off. Come on, you fuck off. Jackson? Alright, got my little flare pieces on. Got that. I think it looks good. Most important part, don't think about it too much. Just throw it together and it'll probably be fine. So now we need to put some patches on her. Well, I took all the patches off of my other vests to make this my one favorite vest since it goes all the way up to my neck. So I'd say I got my work cut out for me. Let's put some patches on. So I'll just throw a pin in there to secure it. Start your thread, go backwards a little bit to lock it in, and then just keep going. Thank 
So there's a really interesting trend that I've noticed that the old school biker with a leather vest and patches is kind of almost gone to the wayside. When we go to events and things anymore, we hardly see people wearing patches. Plenty of flannel, but not as much patches as there used to be. When I started my patch sewing business, um, I even saw that more of anything, it was some of the, the older riders, not people, you know, people my age, you know, 30 and under, getting patches anymore. It's, it's really interesting to see the, the change, and I wonder why, why that's, that's happening. of my customers that want to get patches but and maybe that's just our area is that people just don't want to put patches on like they used to which is really weird have you noticed that in any of the areas that you live where people just don't wear patches on their vests anymore One thing I think is really funny too is that since I started sewing patches, I've had so many people stop me and ask me about the rules of putting patches on and oh, I've heard this from this person, I've heard this from this person. And what really blows my mind about the whole thing, and I've seen other YouTube videos too where people are talking about, well, don't do this, don't do this, wear this. If you're ever unsure, ask your local, fuck that. If you think a patch is cool, just put it on your damn vest. Who cares? Why are we seeking out more rules? Why are we seeking out more regulations? I understand not wearing patches that are going to offend or piss off people that are going to whoop your ass. <laughs> I'm, I'm really amazed at all the people that are asking about the rules of putting on patches. And you see those videos online. Five rules if you want to be the old lady. If you're an independent biker, here are some rules for you. Everyone's looking for rules. It's the dumbest shit I've ever seen in my world. Like, dumbest shit ever. There's no reason for that. You know, I'm, um, I don't know. I was essentially saying I don't understand the infatuation with rules that we've seen. And, you know, people don't really wear patches like they used to, but... Everyone's, everyone's so worried about breaking the rules. The if rules. you're truly independent, then what rules would you have to actually follow is the real question. Well said. It's kind of like the whole, you know, illusion that we're free when we're really not. Well said. I mean, if you're going to be independent, be independent. I guess it just comes down to that. That is very true. I'm not saying step on anybody else's toes, but at the same time, how far do you, where do you draw the line? Free or not free? That is true. You don't become a biker to ask for more rules. Well, I guess independents don't.
Well, to me, the whole point of being a biker is to be independent, to go do and be free and, you know, screw the man, essentially. Got all these rules you gotta follow every day just in normal life. Why would you add more uh, under any circumstances, let alone in your hobby? I mean, but some people will have to have that structure. They can't, they, they can't function without it. That is but true. To be truly independent, that's terrifying to a lot of people. Well, yeah, it's just, it's easy rider. True freedom. That's, well, yeah, they, that they hate you people. and they're afraid of you. Well, there's, that scares people. And I, that's probably the best line out of that movie is Jack Nicholson talking about people being scared of real freedom. Completely. So. My favorite part is that all they see when they look at us is somebody that needs a haircut. <laughs> well, back in the day, bikers weren't welcome. And now they've tried to make bikers mainstream just like everything else in the world, like tattoos. and. Well, they are mainstream. Look at the bike knives at the fancy breweries, not dive bars anymore. Well, that's what I'm saying is it's all gone mainstream just like everything else because there's money in it now. Wow. So they've tried to change that stigma. So, you know, and if you want to be in a, if you want to be in a club or you want to be a, a whatever, then that's on you. But some of us don't want to add rules to our already busy ruled lives. So or need more bills. Well, not even bills. It well, yeah, you have to pay to dues and all that shit. Well, yeah, but that's a whole another conversation. We're just talking about patches. That's We're not true. talking about being in a club or not in a club. We're yeah. literally just talking about patches on your back and adding to that stigma of, you know, I can't do this or I gotta do that. Well, if you're independent, then says who? Exactly. I'm not saying go poke somebody's eye out and be like, ha ha ha, but at the same time, are you really independent? <laughs> Bam. Thanks, love. Mm -hmm. I want to go camp in the desert. And I want to fucking trip mushrooms. And I want to do biker shit. I don't want to ask for permission. If somebody thinks something on my vest is offensive, then I did my job for that day. And that's how everyone should think. It's supposed to be funny. It's a joke, not a dick. Don't take it so hard. <laughs> I am offended.